Hello, good friends, and welcome to Kelly's Wordy Reactions. I want to thank you so much for stopping by today. Also, if you would, please hit the thumbs up and like the video as you come in. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those things do help me out. And there is a universal law that says if you give, it shall be, it will be given back to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over, others will pour back into you. And let's face it, it does feel good to do things that we know will benefit somebody else. But knowing there's a promise that the same goodness is coming back to you, but only multiplied, that just makes it even better. Let's get to the business that calls us here today. Let's get to looking at these RICO charges. So, um, or however it is that you say it, I don't know, not completely. I'm, I'm sure I'm not doing that completely correct. Um, it's like one RICO indictment with, with all this stuff under it. And I kind of wanted to, to take a look at it all um, and like really look at it because let's see, by now I've heard it read about three times. And let me see, am I missing anything? Yeah, I've heard it read now about three times, but I wanted to slow down the pace. I wanted to really like see what's going on in each one of these. And it's a lot. Um, it's a lot. And so I'm almost positive we won't get to all of them. I don't even know if that would be a good idea because in order to really see what's going on, you kind of want to take your time or so I think, I don't know, might not take as much time as I think, but nevertheless, whatever it is, let's go ahead and get into looking at it. Okay. So for my reference, I want to shout out to and thank Chronicle Speaks. Um, like I said, I've listened to this three times. So I heard Pam Esquire, the law intellect, read it. Uh, I believe I heard Fran over at uh, Real Talk Bougie. Fran, I believe I heard her read it. Mm, did I hear anybody else read it? And then I've, I've heard it read through on Chronicle Speaks. Um, and I'm going to go to Chronicle Speaks because she posted she posted the words and let it like slow roll so I can stop it and start it and everything. Um, let's see. So yeah, I'm going I'm going to use hers for my point of reference today. And like I said, I want to shout out to Chronicle Speaks and thank her. Um, and probably, mm, let me see if I can remember to post a link to this entire video. Let me write that down. Because y'all may or may not know how it is to mean to do something well-meaning and then just, it just totally... Once you stop thinking about it, it is gone. So post link. Okay. All right. First bullet point of probably many. Matter of fact, let me get my notepad because that is. surely going to present itself again where I need to write something down. Okay. All right, put that right there. Okay, so now it's weird not seeing my little avatar up here. So let me put my avatar back. Uh, okay, where is my avatar? Okay. 
Okay, so let's go on over here and we're going to go to Chronicle Speaks and see what we can find out. Okay, let me share my screen and share and make this larger. and mute myself while I cough. Hold one moment. <laughs> okay, thank you for your patience. All right, let's get into this. Okay, so this is from the the indictment of Ernest Williams for the RICO. So it reads, manner and methods of the RICO scheme. Now she read this, but I'm not gonna go that deep um, because I do wanna stop. And so I might as well just read it myself. <clears throat> so I don't have to, um, so I don't have to keep, you know, stopping and starting the video. I'll just go to the parts that we want to read here. All right. So from at least December 1st, 2009 through January 30th, 2022, Ernest Williams engaged in a pattern of racketeering. And this is, of course, what's being alleged, right? He's still not, um, he still hasn't been convicted of anything. So this is what's being alleged. So they're alleging that Ernest Williams engaged in a pattern of racketeering activity in Fulton County, Georgia, elsewhere in the state of Georgia and in other states. So Mr. Williams, they're alleging he, he engaged in racketeering in Fulton County, Georgia, elsewhere in the state of Georgia and in other states. All right, the RICO scheme was designed to defraud unsuspecting individuals, businesses, and governmental entities with the primary purpose of depriving numerous victims of their property. Okay, Williams stole United States currency personal vehicles. So he's, they're, they're alleging he stole money. He stole personal vehicles. He stole motorcycles. He stole coach buses. He stole trailers, automotive parts, and other various services and property. Other various services and property often by falsely promising to help his victims engage in new business ventures to promote their existing business ventures or to help them build their brand or image. All right, so these are all the things that he was promising people. All right, many of Williams's victims were women and Williams often used the illusion of romantic or close personal relationships with those victims to manipulate them and to steal from them. And I want to put a pin right there. And um, a pastor that I used to um, belong to his church, he used to say, I want to park parenthetically. <laughs> we can park parenthetically right here. And just, just, I don't know, try to nail this point down that it is not okay. It is not okay to use your romantic interest or the romantic interest that you know another person has in you to, what did they say? make them into a victim. It's not okay to meet that person and then use them because you know 
that they want to promote their existing business ventures or get them interested in building a brand or building their image on social media or elsewhere. It's not okay. Now, I'm, I'm stressing this point because if we listen to Miss Sonia Ponytail, Bonytail, Durham Waller, if we listen to her, then you will you will get the understanding from her that she truly believes and she uh what is the word encouraged nesto i mean and it, it didn't really matter at the point when she started talking to him about it because he was already under arrest under investigation in jail and the the wheels were already rolling on what he'd already done but just to still encourage someone and and make them uh sort of more secure in their standing that that it was perfectly fine to get into these uh, relationships with these women and take them for their money. She kept telling everybody that would listen that all that's civil, all, all that stuff is civil. And it may very well be, but it is also a crime. It's a crime which is something that I, I thought all along as she was would would talk about it and talk about how civil it was. And I would just think that she, I don't know, is just missing a link somewhere that if you don't understand that they have a, that they have a legal definition for this in in the penal system, in the criminal penal code, right? They have a definition for this at this point. It's not just something that you can sue for in civil court. It is a crime. And that's why he's in jail for some of it. So to just sit there and and stand there and <laughs> and every way that she did try to announce to the world that all this stuff is just civil and almost like it didn't mean anything, much like it didn't mean anything, is, I don't know, it, it's, it's everything from heartless to almost criminal, in, in my opinion, um, just, just to even, just to even put it up as it's no big deal. And if somebody wants their money back, they can just go sue you when you have literally stolen. Um, and, and we'll see how all the charges are, are written. But I mean, it's 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 awful. It, it's a shame. Um, it is criminal. It's criminal. It's not just civil. It's criminal. And it's almost criminal to say that it's not. Um, I'm going to probably have to take a break on y'all in a second and get some water, but I will go as much as I can without it. Okay, so let's pick back up right here. Many of Williams' victims were women, and Williams often used the illusion of romantic or close personal relationships with those victims to manipulate them and to steal from them. Okay. Mm. Oh, it's because I'm on the wrong page. <laughs> okay, let me get over here. Okay, so. Steal from them. <clears throat> Move 
the page up a little bit. <clears throat> okay. As part of the scheme, Williams knowingly entered into a fraudulent marriage with Shirley Strawberry. Hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, okay, hold on. I'm going to get my water. I'm not going to struggle through like this. Let's see. Let's go back over here. Let's go back over here. I wish I knew how some of these other sounds sounded. But since I don't, well, let's see what this one sounds like. Hold, please. I think that's a pretty good one, actually. And thank you so much for holding. <laughs> right. Okay. I'm back. And let us resume. Okay. As part of the scheme. As part of the scheme. As part. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to do y'all like that either. Look. As part of the scheme. Y'all, if this is not one of the most cold-blooded things that is in this indictment, this is cold right here. Mm, you know what? It it I shudder to think because you have um you have written in this indictment or they have written in this indictment that as part of the scheme, Williams knowingly entered into a fraudulent marriage with Shirley Strawberry, a famous radio host. They're putting that marrying Shirley Strawberry was a whole part of his criminal enterprise. And to further hammer this point in, Williams used the void marriage and the high profile celebrity connections he made because of the void marriage to in furtherance of other frauds. Wow. There it is. <clears throat> there it is. That's that 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 just I don't know that just hurts like to think that Shirley married this man out of love and delight that she had found perhaps the love of her life especially in the latter portion and you know she married him because she was in love but here they have I don't know, stamped in the in the chronicles of time, um, no pun intended <laughs> on Chronicles Speaks, but they have, you know, I mean, they, they've stamped and deemed her marriage a part of his scheme. And that he 
absolutely used the void marriage and the high profile celebrity connections he made because of the void marriage and furtherance of other frauds. And I'm just going to just say this and hurry up and get off of it. But honestly and truly, when I first heard about this situation, I didn't, I didn't hear about like the calls and all those things. I had heard that Nesto or Ernest Williams, Shirley Strawberry's husband was, uh, was in jail. And I probably did hear it from Storm Monroe's platform because I do listen to him uh, often. So, but it was kind of like in one ear and out the other um, type, like you heard it, you know it, okay, you know, moving on. But I didn't really get into the story until it came out in September. And when I heard a lot of the things that I heard, and I believe I was listening to Pam Esquire, The Law Intellect, I was like, oh, wow. And and I've said this before. Also, at the same time, I had been um, listening to a lot of uh, romance scam content. And I was like, this is this is a whole entire romance scam. And the the thing that stood out to me was that it was in person versus online. And that it had lasted such a long time. I was like, wow, this is you know, he's pulled this off for a long time, but why wouldn't he? Because this is the absolute perfect person to, to scam. She has a good job. Her, her boss is, or I didn't even think it was her boss at the time. I just thought the person that she works with, Steve Harvey, he is a uh, world known, world-renowned world Steve Har Harvey, uh, comic, TV actor. Uh, has he been in a lot of movies? I don't think so, but, you know, everybody knows Steve Harvey from comedy, comedy specials, TV shows, game shows, uh, announcer, um, the Apollo, like, you know, you name it. We, everybody knows Steve Harvey. It's hardly anybody anywhere. And, and in any country, I'm sure you could go to, somebody knows about Steve Harvey. And so you have a woman who's absolutely beautiful, but she has this major job with this major celebrity and you can use her uh, the fact that so many people know her, and if they don't, they know Steve Harvey, and you can basically call out her name, and it's a it's a shoe in into pretty much anywhere, whether she's there or not. Wait a minute. And so when I understood that he had this co-defendant. I was like, oh my gosh, I bet that woman is all on the phone pretending like she's Shirley Strawberry. I didn't really think about pretending like she worked for Shirley Strawberry in some other venture and kind of putting it that way. I didn't really, I didn't think about it in total. I just thought about what was possible and probable that he was doing. Um, knowing this is your spouse, so you have everything, you have all of their social security number, you have access to everything about them because it's your spouse. So if he's a scammer, it's no telling what all he's been doing with her information, with his access to her, with his access to other people in the industry. Um, just it's just no telling what all he's done. You know, I, I basically I shudder to think of all of the things that he could have been doing uh, using her, so to speak, in so many different realms. I couldn't even comprehend how many things he could have done. But I was sure that he had been on his BS using her. And um, and now, you know, all these months later, this Rico has been handed down. And basically is saying, 
That's exactly what he was doing. And, you know, I just, my heart goes out to Shirley. I've always, you know, been on, I wouldn't say on Shirley's side, because of course, you know, <laughs> I, I just wouldn't say I, I've been on her side, but I've been very empathetic towards Shirley in that I consider her age. Um, I've always been a person who's had, um, well, I don't have her anymore, but I had my grandmother in my life. Uh, she was close to 95 when she passed away. All of my grandmother's sisters, um, all of my own aunts, um, just a lot of elders. I've had a lot of elders. Um, I guess the blessing of having a lot of elders in my life. And, you know, I just could empathize even with her, my, my own mother. Well, my mother passed away when she was 58, but <clears throat> I guess my mother was basically passing away at the time when Shirley Strawberry would have been marrying this guy, or not at the same time, but basically around the same age, Shirley was marrying this man. And um, so in just thinking about these other people that you have in your life, um, you know, like you, you're, as a woman, you're going through a lot at that, at those years, at those ages, those stages. And if you are going to get with a man, you need for him to be, you need for the situation to be right because you already have enough things that you're going through in your body uh, with changes and trying to make sure you, you stay healthy. You're getting to the point to where you have to take um, care of yourself really good. You have to visit the doctor often to make sure that you're not um, developing any problems. Um, you're going from a fertile stage, you know, just a natural life cycle of being fertile and being uh, in reproductive stage to that that whole, you know, stage of life shutting down, you know, and it, it comes along with certain body changes and everything. So you're dealing with a lot just in and of yourself. And to, you know, to meet somebody, if you're going to meet somebody, they really have to be right. It really has to be right because <clears throat> in a sense, like you don't have the capacity to maybe put a lot of energy and effort on somebody who's running amok, <laughs> like maybe you did, or maybe you tolerated some things, or maybe you, you know, I don't know, maybe it's, it's a bad decision to put energy and effort into somebody that's running amok anyway, but definitely you don't, you don't have the capacity for it and the wherewithal for it when you get to these other stages. So just in all this consideration, which, you know, listening to me, I'm, I'm sure you're like, Oh God, you, you throwing a lot of stuff in there, but I am because it's a, it's a, it's an empathy from, from knowing like, you're not 28 when you're 58, you know, you're not 36 when you're 63. It's a, it's a difference. And so just taking all that in, into consideration, I've just always been like, oh, wow. You know, um, I do, I think it was smart. Her just kind of seemingly looking the other way on a lot of this stuff. Absolutely not. But do I understand how it could happen? Also, you throw in a full time, full time demanding job, competitive job where you're probably always, you know, knowing that and wondering who's coming for your position. And you are well past retirement, like Shirley is past retirement age, but she's still going and she's going strong. But just a moment. Yeah, she's still going and she's going strong, but she's well, well, well um, past an age where she could have retired and just said, OK, I'm I'm out of full time work at this point. But she's still going strong. Um, a job that she has to do odd hours at times, a job that she has to travel at times. And 
um, a job where she even gets, um, she even picks up extra little jobs here and there because of the, the type of work she does, the, I guess, voiceover and marketing and things that she does. Uh, even trying to develop uh, other streams of income at this I don't know, time in life, you know, she's just now getting into developing, or she was, uh, she talked about on these calls, developing a candle line and a, and a handbag line and all these things. And then on the other hand, end, you have this man that you, you, he's, you know, he's put himself up as this businessman. But at times, I'm sure she, she saw and she could tell that he's actually still running amok you know did she make the best decision with how she handled that i i think not absolutely not but it's just kind of like look at all the other things that she's juggling <laughs> that she's juggling and um i you know i i empathize with her um but i also think that <clears throat> it's unfortunate. It's extremely unfortunate that she didn't take her herself, you know, her own self into consideration more over the top of him. I feel like she considered him more, her daughter more, her daughter's bills more, um, the whatever it was that they had going on, I, I I feel like she didn't consider herself, her safety, her standing, what could actually happen to her and her name and her brand and, you know, all of that. If she wasn't with someone who had the, uh, at least a very decent level of integrity. Maybe not the utmost integrity, but at least a respectable and decent level of integrity. I don't think she, I don't think she considered it. And in doing that, um, you have one of the worst case scenarios laying out before us with this precedent setting phone calls um, from jail that and and video visits that have now come out and are public. And um, so, yeah, so that's that on that. Uh, <laughs> and I'll pause. And so now y'all see why I didn't just have her read it because it, I knew it was going to be just too much pausing in here. So I'm just, um, I'm just, we're just going at it like this. Uh, but again, shout out to Chronicle Speaks. Um, Love the platform over there. I've been a subscriber over there for a long time. I'm using what she put up to read from so that I can stop and start as frequently as I need to. Okay. So where was I? Uh, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. So yeah, so basically this indictment is calling uh, Shirley's married to marriage to Ernest Williams a void marriage. Uh, a marriage that he entered into knowing it was fraudulent and part of his scheme to um, further his, his frauds. Okay, so during the course of the scheme, Williams recruited multiple co-conspirators. Wow. It's... <laughs> I don't know. It's just kind of mind boggling to see all this written out this way in this indictment. Because when they say that my mind first went to Miss Jones, that I don't even know. I don't even know if she will ever become a part of this Rico. But my mind shot straight to Mrs. Jones that he had over there acting like she was some type of salon manager. And really, she's um, she's helping him to um, essay the women that come in there for a job. But anyway, that's beside the that's beside the uh, this this Rico. Anyway, let's go. 
During the course of the scheme, Williams recruited multiple co-conspirators, including Erica King. Hmm, that also speaks volumes too, because they're saying he recruited multiple co-conspirators. So that gives me the idea that they are not finished adding co-conspirators. Think about that. Uh, but okay, including Erica King. On multiple occasions, Williams solicited King to fraudulently assume the identities of multiple attorneys. Momentito. Uh, da, 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 da. On multiple occasions, Williams solicited King to fraudulently assume the identities of multiple attorneys licensed to practice law in Georgia in order to deceive law enforcement and the courts, including by appearing in court and by falsely and fraudulently representing Williams in hearings. Well, we that's not anything that we don't know. So let's keep going. As part of the pattern of racketeering activity, Williams engaged in various related criminal activities, including but not limited to, and let's scroll down here, including but not limited to, Theft by taking, theft by conversion. I'm going to go down a little bit more. Okay, theft by taking, theft by conversion, theft by deception, theft of services, theft by bringing stolen property into the state, acts involving theft, false swearing, filing false documents, false statements, and Mm, kind of jumps right there. 18. There we go. <clears throat> False statements and writings, identity fraud, and deposit account fraud. So let's go over that again. So they're, they're saying that all these things, excuse me, all these things were a pattern of the racketeering activity. And, <clears throat> okay, Williams engaged in various related criminal activities. Okay, so all these criminal activities are related, including but not limited to. Wow. <laughs> this is This is funny to me, all the things that they are saying that are, uh, we know is some more, okay? Multiple co-conspirators, but they only named one, Erica King, including these crimes, but not limited to, not limited to these crimes. So it's some more stuff, but we'll, we'll see about that later. <laughs> okay. All right. So Let's keep going. To about right here. Okay, acts of racketeering activity. The said accused engaged in the following acts of racketeering activity in furtherance of one or more incidents, schemes, and transactions that had the same and similar intents, results, accomplices, victims, and methods of commission, 
and otherwise were interrelated by distinguishing characteristics and were not isolated incidents. This interrelated pattern of criminal activity was motivated by pecuniary gain. Wow. Shots fired. What sticks out to me here is they're saying that, okay, so the accused person engaged in the following acts of racketeering activity in the furtherance of one or more incidents. Uh, and I'll just stop right there. So <clears throat> if you'll notice, and this is why I really wanted to dig into this, uh, and they're talking about the interrelated pattern of the criminal activity for the pecuniary gain. So let's do this one thing real quick. Um, so this is why I wanted to get into it, because when I was really listening to the acts this last time at first, I was just so shocked. I think that there were so many acts. But when I was listening to him this third time, I was like, wow, okay, so he did this so he could do that. He did this, and then this helped with this activity. Um, and I think that in my mind anyway, I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not a lawyer or have any law background whatsoever, ever, um, <laughs> other than what I've picked up along the way. But uh, but yeah, so when I, when I see all of the, like, it's act one and then act one and act two, and maybe even sometimes act three, or it'll be three things in a row that are related to, I got this and then I did this to get that. And then I get, did that to seal the deal on this. It was, I was like, oh, okay. So so this was, I don't know, just a, like a total job he would do on a person to get what they had. Um, okay. And just to make sure. Okay. Just to make sure I know what pecuniary gain means. Okay, it says pecuniary gain means any dealing with money, monetary or financial, or something able to be evaluated in terms of money. Okay, so there we go. Pecuniary is consisting of or measured in money. All right, so no, no surprises there really, but just want to make sure that we're knowing what things mean all the way. <clears throat> so this interrelated pattern of criminal activity was motivated by pecuniary gain. So every time you say the see the little, you know, related pattern of activity, oh, I, I got this person and then I, I gave them this check and then I took their vehicle and then they went to cash the check, but they couldn't get the check cashed because it wasn't even a real check. And oh, yeah, by the way, the check um, was falsely, you know, the whole the whole check was false. So you have a false document that you're probably putting into the bank and the, the check is not even a real check. And then you gave the check to somebody, presented them with the check so that they could get uh, so that you could get their property and you took off with their property. Now they're depositing the check and the check is no good. Um, so yeah, it's like a whole little interrelated pattern of criminal activity, I guess. That's the best way to describe it like they did. Okay, so I'm going to read Act 1 here. Get a little sip of water. Here we go. On and between December 1, 2009 and January 31st, 2010, the exact date being unknown to the grand jury, Ernest Williams committed the felony offense of theft by 
conversion in violation of dot 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 in DeKalb County, Georgia, by having lawfully obtained United States currency. So, okay, let's read that good. In DeKalb County, Georgia, by having lawfully ob obtained money, right? The property of Drusilla Scott, the value of which exceeded $500, under an agreement to make a specified application of such funds, knowingly converting the funds to his own use in violation of the agreement. This was an act of racketeering activity pursuant to the code dot, dot, dot. <clears throat> okay. So they're, they're saying that he lawfully got her money. Uh, he didn't he didn't take it uh, unlawfully or anything. She willingly gave him the money. However, uh, and then they, they give the value. It was over $500. So this could have been $999. They have a, a pattern of um, like overs and unders. Um, and I guess which constitutes like what type of felony is going to land under. So they don't necessarily say the exact dollar amount because all they need to know is what kind of felony is this. So this was over 500 and uh, probably under some other amount, but this lets them know for the most part what type of felony or misdemeanor, you know, but they've already told us it's a felony offense. <clears throat> so, so yeah, he, he took money that exceeded $500. They had an agreement. He was supposed to do a certain thing with the money. And then he used the money for not for what uh, they agreed upon. And this is a crime. Sonia, Sonia, this is a crime. They didn't ask, oh, are y'all involved? Um, do y'all have some type of um, personal, close personal relationship? Oh, you do? Oh, okay. Well, that's not a crime. You just, you shouldn't have gave your money away. They didn't say that. This nowhere in here did they say, oh, this is a woman. Uh, are are y'all both straight? Oh, y'all got a, something going on? Oh, okay. They take that to civil court. They did not say that. They call this theft by conversion. Okay. A felony offense called theft by conversion. All right. Okay. As long as we got that understood. Okay. So moving on to Act Two. So this is at 810. So Act Two. Da, 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 8. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's not 810. Need to look at the bottom number. Okay, Act 2. On and between January 1st, 2013 and December 31st, 2013. Okay, the exact date being unknown. So we see in both of these acts, these are well, well, well before Shirley Strawberry had anything to do with him at all. Uh, December 2009, and then Act 2 started January 1st, 2013. So these are not within the scope of him and Shirley at all, but they are still in some sort of um, statute of limitations because or the, or doing this RICO, they were able to capture it inside of a RICO uh, because nothing states that these are not valid claims against him that are now 
crimes and offenses. Okay. So on Jan on and between January 1st, 2013 and December 31st, 2013, the exact date being unknown to the grand jury, Ernest Williams committed the felony offense of theft by taking in violation of code and dot, dot, dot in Fulton County, Georgia, by unlawfully taking United States currency, which we know as money, the property of Jasmine Collins. So we got Drusilla Scott in Act 1, and we got Jasmine Collins in Act 2, okay? The value of which was at least $5,000, but less than $25,000 with the intention of depriving said owner of said property. This was an act of racketeering activity pursuant to code and dot, dot, dot. Okay, and I'm just saying that because I'm not going to be able to do all these letters and numbers and dots. Okay, so on this one, uh, and I'm going to read the definition of theft by taking because it's interesting to know the differences between the few ways that we're they're going to tell us he stole something. <laughs> There's differences and um, we're going to find out what they are. So in Georgia, theft by taking. It's loading. Okay. In Georgia, you could be charged with theft through many ways. There is theft by taking, theft by deception, theft by conversion, theft by shoplifting, theft by extortion, and so on. There are many differences in the varying types of theft, and that is why it is important to have someone on your side that understands theft in all its areas. Okay, so this is a law firm. And... I just want a basic definition. Okay, theft by taking. Okay, theft by taking is the most common type of theft that appears in Georgia. Georgia defines theft by taking as occurring when a person unlawfully takes or being in lawful possession of thereof unlawfully appropriates any property of another with the intention of depriving him of the property, regardless of the manner in which the property is taken or appropriated. Okay. So when it says or, or being in lawful possession. So if you're, the, okay, so this, what comes to mind for me is you, um, you let me borrow your car, right? I say, oh, you know what? Um, dang, I just had a flat. Babe, can you let me you drive your car to the to the store? And then the person is goes, sure. Here, you know, here are the keys go on to the store. So so uh so you give the I forgot if I'm the person, if I'm the thief or the person that's giving the car. <laughs> but anyway, you give the person the car. And they are in lawful possession of the car. I gave them the key. I told them, yeah, great, fine, go to the store, whatever. And then they go down to the, um, you know, neighborhood chop shop 
and go, hey, how much will y'all give me for this car? <laughs> so they're like, man, you want to uh, sell us this car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to sell you the car. So they're like, man, we'll give you, I don't know, three grand for it. It's, you know, it's a good car. We can do a lot with this car. So I gave the person the car and then they took it and sold it. This is just the example that's coming to my mind. So they go and sold the car, my car to the chop shop. And then they call me and say, hey, somebody, um, somebody carjacked me for your car. <laughs> Knowing that they went and got $3,000 at the chop shop for my car. And um, so, yeah, theft by taking. Because they were in, where am I? Yeah, they were in lawful possession. They were in lawful possession of my vehicle, but they unlawfully appropriated the property of me, says of another, with the intention of depriving me of my property. Regardless of the manner in which the property was taken or appropriated. The point is, they took my stuff intentionally depriving me of my property and yeah i gave it to him but i didn't give it to him to have it and sell it and you know give it to somebody else or whatever deprive me of my property i didn't give it to him for that reason i gave it to him so they could go down the street to the store and they went over across town and sold it to the chop shop or gave it to their other girlfriend or whatever but that's that you know Theft by taking. That's that's theft by taking. Okay. Very interesting. Can't say we're not learning anything today, or at least I can't. And um, and so in this case, what he took from Miss Jasmine Collet, uh, Collins was at least five thousand dollars, but less than. $25,000. And it was money. Yep. He unlawfully took U.S. United States currency. So, wow. So in that case, he must have taken the money with intention of depriving said owner of said property. by unlawfully taking. Oh, wow. So when this says unlawfully taking, it sounds like she didn't even give him permission. So could this have been a situation where he took money, you know, from her, from the ATM or took money? Mm. But yeah, it, it doesn't explain the hows, but we can come up with some conclusions of our own by knowing that it was a theft by taking. So we read that definition. And unlike in Miss Drusilla Scott's case, she gave it to him lawfully, but he took this money from this woman unlawfully. So she didn't just hand it over. Um, and it was at least $5,000, but less than 25,000 with the absolute intention of depriving said owner of said property. My God today, my God, my God. Okay, let's go on to act three, I'm at nine. Um, so let's go on, scroll up for act three. Okay, that looks that looks about, about right good right there. Okay, so Act 3, on or about October 3rd, 2013, Ernest Williams committed the felony offense of theft of services in violation of code and dot, dot, dot in Fulton County, Georgia, by knowingly obtaining construction and remodeling services, which were available only for, which were available only for compensation. Oh, okay. So theft of services. So he obtained 
the construction and remodeling services and they were to be compensated for. The value uh, of which was at least 1,500 and one cent, but less than $5,000. So this could have been anything from like $4,500 uh, $2,500. Okay. From Mario Alvarado by deception and with the intent to avoid payment. This was an act of racketeering activity pursuant to code and dot. Okay. So he took someone's construction and remodeling services, theft of services. Wow, I guess he just kept promising the guy he was going to pay because it doesn't look like he wrote a check for those services or anything. It just says he was, the man was supposed to be compensated but didn't get compensated. Man, oh, man. Okay, so we're at 10.02 now. So go on up for Act 4. Went a little too far. Act four. On or about October 18th, 2013, Ernest Williams committed the felony offense of theft by taking in violation of code and dot in Fulton County, Georgia by unlawfully taking United States currency the property of Crystal Waters, okay? So he took Crystal Waters money, the value of which was at least $5,000, but less than $25,000 with the intention of depriving said owner of said property. This was an act of racketeering activity pursuant to code and dot. All right, so... Um, let's see. He took Crystal Waters' money. Was it lawfully or unlaw unlawfully? So he just unlawfully took Crystal Waters' money. This is what's being alleged. It was five thousand, more than five thousand, and less than twenty-five thousand. And with the intention of depriving said owner of said property. Mm, mm, mm. That's Act Four. So no fancy dancy there. He just some kind of way maneuvered his way into getting, uh, taking her money. Okay. Act five. On or about November 24, 2013, Ernest Williams committed the felony offense of theft by deception in violation of the codes and the dots in Fulton County, Georgia, by, theft by deception now, by unlawfully, so it wasn't an agreement, he just unlawfully took, unlawfully obtaining United States currency. So he unlawfully took money, the property of Melvin Stokes, the value of which was at least $5,000, but less than $25,000 by deceitful means in selling a 1989 provost vehicle to Stokes while intentionally failing to disclose a, a substantial and valid known lien and other legal impediments to the enjoyment of the vehicle and with the intention of depriving said owner of said property. This was an act of racketeering activity pursuant to the codes and the dots. Okay. So, November 2013, around Thanksgiving time, <laughs> Ernest did theft by deception and he unlawfully obtained he unlawfully obtained money, the property of Melvin Stokes, the cash value of which was 5,000, 
and less than 25,000 by deceitful means. Okay. By selling a 1989 Provost vehicle to Stokes. So he sold this vehicle to Stokes while intentionally failing to disclose a substantial and valid known lien. Oh, and other legal impediments to the enjoyment of the vehicle and with the intention of depriving said owner of said property. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so this man... Knowing that this, okay, and let's look at this real quick. Um, Wow. Okay, let me. Stop sharing this one. Go over here. And. This is what a 1989 provost looks like. So essentially what they're saying on this, on this one right here is that Nesto knew that this vehicle already had liens. Hmm. He sold the 1989 Provost vehicle to Stokes while intentionally, so he failed to disclose a substantial and valid known lien and other legal impediments to the enjoyment of the vehicle and with the intention of depriving said owner of said property. So he already knew that this vehicle had liens. He probably already had like, um, I don't know how you go get loans. Um, you go get um, loans on something that you already have an asset to or or like a substantial loan on it. And then he went and sold it to somebody. So actually the person, it was, it didn't belong to the person. So basically he stole this man's money because he knew that this man could not, could not have the vehicle. It wasn't his to have. It basically already belonged to whoever that lien holder was, whatever loan company or payday loan or whatever he had taken out. So, you know, and let's see, who is this? Melvin Stokes. So it, but the property belonged to, um, he sold it to Melvin, but he didn't have a right to because he already, you know, he already had basically sold it to somebody else by taking out loan or whatever he had done, using it as collateral in some other way. And then uh, he took this man's money somewhere between 5,000 and 25,000. And, um, and yeah, deprived him of his, of his money. So he didn't have the, his money and he did not truly own the vehicle. My God, my God. Okay, that was Act 5. So I just wanted us to see what this provost looked like because this was another thing as all these charges were being read out. I was like, what's the provost? Um, I was thinking some type of little car <laughs> that I didn't know, that I didn't know of. And no, the provost, so every time we see this provost in these uh, counts and acts and everything here, this is an RV. 
And what did Sonia say? We have RVs in common. RVs. We both love RVs. We have RVs in common. Well, Sonia, it looks like his love for RVs also came along with him taking some somebody else's, allegedly. Yeah, so let's go back to our counts and, and acts and stuff here. 33. It's too far. Okay. Act six. On or about December 16, 2014, Ernest Williams committed the felony offense of false swearing in violation of these codes and numbers and dots, okay, <laughs> in Fulton County, Georgia, by unlawfully having been administered a lawful oath and having executed a document knowing that it purported to be an acknowledgement of a lawful oath, knowingly and willfully making the false statements that each of Ernest Williams's prior marriages had been dissolved by divorce and that Ernest Williams was not subject to any legal impediment or other reason Ernest Williams should not be married. Said false statements having been made in marriage license application number 2014-6319 filed in probate court of Fulton County, Georgia, a matter other than a judicial proceeding. This was an act of racketeering activity pursuant to the code and the dot of it all. <laughs> okay, so this is um this is where they are charging him as well for false swearing. So he was not supposed to swear to and give his oath knowing that he was not legally able to marry someone because his all of his marriages had not been dissolved of legally and appropriately but yet he went up there and falsely sweared and here's the application number and they said it was definitely filed in probate court of Fulton County Georgia so maybe there's a way that um, being a celebrity, the, the license can be filed like under some other type of a name or something like that um, to cloak, uh, to, you know, provide it for a appropriate covering for someone who is a celebrity that doesn't want their, I often wondered like, you know, like, when you buy a home or certain things are just a matter of public record. So maybe they, they have some way of putting them under another type of a name. Uh, like when somebody writes a book, so maybe it's like a pseudo name or something for someone who is a public figure that they can go under because it, it says that they had a, a marriage license application and it was filed in probate court of Fulton County. But yet for all the people that tried to look for it, they couldn't find it. Uh, so maybe they just have a different way of being able to file it, being a public figure that nobody knew about. But um, okay. <laughs> With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get off this video. It's already an hour long, how the time flies. And um, yeah, it's already an hour long. So let me cut it 
Let me cut it right here and come back. And I may even come back live and do a couple of things and get a little bit more prepared for my day. And I may come back live and read some more of these. And so, because I really like being able to dig into them and have like a real good understanding of what has transpired at least allegedly <laughs> all right all right so thank you all so much for stopping by today if you have not already please 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 hit that like button on the way out also subscribe to the channel if you have not already and i thank you so much and i will be back and i will see you on the next one bye